So the big question is this, how are real estate investors who don't have a ton of free time, don't have access to off-market deals, and didn't start life on third base? How do we grow a real estate business conservatively to support our families, finally leave the corporate rat race, and build a legacy? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Ed Matthews, and this is Real Estate Underground. This is the Real Estate Underground podcast show number 69. Greetings and salutations, Real Estate Undergrounders. This is Ed Matthews with the Real Estate Underground podcast. Uh, today, I am joined by Ken Gee of KRI Partners. Uh, Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm, I'm grateful. Well, thanks, that I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, I've been excited about this. You know, you, uh, you know, as as we were just talking about before I hit record, you know, I I fundamentally believe we're all basically reading the same book, and you know, I may be a couple of chapters ahead of somebody out there in the audience, but you're about 25 chapters ahead of me. So I'm particularly excited. You're you're doing what I want to do when I get when I get good at it. So uh, I'm grateful for your time today, and and uh, thanks for joining us. Well, happily glad to be here. Yeah. So, so Ken, for, you know, I, I've, I've been following you on LinkedIn for quite some time and, you know, I, I try to pay attention to who the players are in the industry and, and that's actually, you know, one of the ways we, we uh, got to this point today. Um, but, uh, you know, for those that may not have come across you in, in the uh, social media world, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do for a living? Yeah. So I uh, grew up in Toledo, Ohio, got my undergrad University of Toledo. Uh, after that, I moved to Cleveland. Went to school at night at Case Western Reserve University, small private school, yep. got my master's degree, uh, became an accountant, went to work for Deloitte for seven years as a CPA, did uh, all the fun stuff a CPA could do, M&A work and due diligence and tax planning and all that kind of stuff. And as fun as it was, it was at that point in my life when uh, uh, I, had, I was very young, this was 25, 26 years ago. Uh, my daughter was very young. My son was young. And uh, I remember it was one morning, three o'clock in the morning, and uh, I was doing her night feeding. And I started thinking to myself, and and if you've heard, a lot of people have probably heard the story before, but it, I, I loved it because it was time for her and I to spend together. But right. then one night I realized, wait a minute, this is three o'clock in the morning. Right. And this is my quality time with my daughter. Right. What's wrong with this picture? And uh, and I And I couldn't figure out how I was going to do all the things that I wanted to do, put my kids through school without a ton of debt, all those things that young people with young families want to figure out how to do. Right. And it was at that point I said, you know what, I got to make some changes here. Uh, and so I woke up the next morning and uh, and then went on this endeavor. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you very briefly, uh, uh, over the next couple of years, I bought three small apartment buildings. And all of them were less than 30 units each. And five, three years later, I sold them. Now get this, I was working at Deloitte at the time, like 80 hours a week. And right, three right. years later, I sold these buildings and made half a million bucks. And I wow. thought, whoa, 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 what just happened here? Yeah. I said, man, this is it, right? I I, I thought this real estate thing was, was the right plan, but now I knew it was. So yeah. yeah. Then I just didn't look back. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to say 25 years or so later, I did put my kids through school. I did uh, equipment W-2 job. This is all I do. And uh, we have helped hundreds of people do exactly what uh, what, what I've done. So excellent. Well, congratulations. Thrilled, uh, yeah, absolutely. Phenomenal. And, and you know, the thing is, is that I, I, I have just as much admiration for uh, the money you made as you, as you did for the, the, uh, you know, the decision you made in terms yeah. of your quality time, because, you know, I was, I was actually talking to somebody earlier today and, you know, they said, well, what does financial, you know, freedom mean to you? And for me, and it sounds like you as well, it's time, right? It's just, I can use, you can use your time with your family, with your, you know, with your girl, with your children, with your wife, with your friends, for yep. your self care, right? Take mm -hmm. care of yourself um, to, uh, you know, you can spend your time any way you want. You don't have to pick up the phone and call a boss and say, hey, can I have, can I do, is it yeah. okay if I, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have yeah, to, I, I, I didn't want to miss my kids' soccer games, baseball games, That's basketball it. games. And guess what? I, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I, I still didn't. have to call, I still have a boss, but I'm, but I'm married to her and she likes me a lot. So she lets me get away, away with <laughs> Yeah, that. there you go. Yeah, right? yeah. 
exactly. um, and I like her too. So, uh, so, so Ken, in terms of the the business that you're in, you know, multifamily, you and I are in, in similar businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what drew you to multifamily in particular as an asset class? Yeah. So as opposed to single family or as opposed to self storage or, or short term rentals or whatever. Yeah. 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 So for me, it was, it's about risk. Yep. Um, I, I can make a case for self storage struggling, medical struggling, office structure struggling, retail. It's really hard for me to figure out how people don't need a place to live. Yep. Right? They just do. And if they That's don't, the well, hierarchy. then the last hierarchy. thing I'm worried, say what? Maslow's hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a basic need, and uh, so that that's why I go to multifamily. It, it is it, it you, know, you can't really use the word safe in any kind of investment world, right. but it was the safest, uh, least risky uh, asset that I could find because I'm really a risk averse person. So that's what drew me to multifamily. Yeah, and I I couldn't agree more. I mean, the 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 fact is is that when all else fails, you still need a roof over your head and you still need food, right? And so, you, you know, that's one A and one B on that on that list at the bottom of that little hierarchical pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the the other part of it though for me is, and the reason I got into multifamily is it allows us to, you know, it allows us to to help people. Like, you know, I focus on we we buy C minus buildings and upgrade them into C plus buildings with the same residents and you know all that. And mm -hmm. I, I think your business is very similar. And, um, and so, uh, you know, that part of it is also gratifying to me as well. It is. Yeah. Yeah. We tend to see, we like the B space. We like to stick in the middle yep. um, because, you know, in recessions, the bottom tier gets hurt the worst yep. and in overbuilding situations, the top tier gets hurt the worst. That's correct. We like right. to be right in the middle because there's yep. tons of people need that and there's not any new supplies. So yeah, for sure. You love sure. that middle space. So, so let's talk about this focus mm -hmm. on, on B-class uh, multifamily. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you are in Ohio. Uh, now, do you focus uh, your, your portfolio? Where, where is that? Yeah, good. That's a great question. First 10 years, the company grew up in Ohio. Okay. So we, we have bought and sold um, 15 years ago. I said, man, I, I can, I'm doing okay in Cleveland, no question. Yeah. What if I was actually in a market where people wanted to go to? Right. They wanted to live. Yeah. And so 15 years ago, I said, let's go. I'm going to Florida. And I okay. flew to Tampa and started the process of getting to be known and, you know, understood and learn mm -hmm. the markets. And, you know, now we manage uh, our senior management teams managed over 16,000 units, uh, about 11,000 of those are in Florida. We we uh, currently manage a couple thousand units, currently own several hundred. So we've never been unit builders. Right, we like right. to buy, add value, sell, move on right. to the next project. So, uh, yeah, so everything we do now, all we'll work in is growth markets. Uh, we're we're dedicated. We're not dedicated. We're predominantly in Florida right now, but we're, okay. you know, very actively trying to grow into other Sunbelt uh, states and cities where there's growth. So, so it's it's fascinating to look at the last, you know, even just the last ten years of mm -hmm. population growth. It's as if the you know someone took the U.S. and dumped it to the south and to the east, right? And all yep. these people are rolling down into that Sun Belt area. And uh, you know, one of the things that I keep reading about, and I don't believe it, but I want to get your your opinion on okay. it, um, sure. is that you know those are the uh, areas, you know, the, the Phoenixes, the Texas, you know, particularly DFW area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Florida, particularly Central Florida, um, they're going to get crushed in the next recession and it's going to be, you know, blood in the streets and blah, blah, blah. I'm just not seeing that data. But nevertheless, there's not a week goes by over the last six months that I don't see someone out there talking about, you know, the fact that the end is near. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. So what's happening, I, remember, I've been around long enough that I lived through 08, 09. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people think, because Florida did get crushed in 08, 09. Sure did. But it, it got crushed for a very different reason. The reason they did is because the lenders all ignored fundamentals. Right. They were buying based on some crappy apartment building being turned into condos. Right. And the loan didn't make any sense. It was all based on this condo conversion. Right. And if you remember back then, they had no doc loans. You could come in right. and say you Good made times. a million bucks, signed the Good piece times. of paper, you got the loan. I mean, it was just ridiculous things. It was. It was None of that is going on now. None right. of it. 
Right. None of it. I mean, I, I could pay whatever I want for a building. You know what the bank's going to say or the lender or Fannie or Freddie? We're only going to lend this much because this right. is all fundamentals will support. Right. So can you go pay whatever you want for that building? But yep. it's not on us, right? And it right. 08 happened. That crush happened because the credit markets went, went away. Right. And they're not because they're holding the line now. And so fundamental, you're right. The fundamentals are holding up. It's all the right things are happening. And uh, I, I'm, it's not happening. I mean, I, I, trust me. I mean, we have a line of people. We have a property. Let me give you an example of how really okay. crazy it is. We have a property in Bradenton. And we, in the month of February, or no, January, we had 1,900 leads for apartments for a 232 unit property. 19, 1,900? Yes. So demand's pretty healthy in Florida. It is. Yeah. And it supply is. is, so so here- They're in, not building any B-class properties, are they? Not really, no, not there. They're anymore. not building any, they can't. They right. can't afford to. They're building A stuff. Right. So in my market, 1,500, 1,800, less than 2,000 a month rent, that's cool. People can deal with that. Yeah, three thousand, four thousand. They can't afford that. No, okay. it's a completely right. different market. Right, entirely different. And so, you know, it's it's fascinating because you know here in Connecticut. So I'm I'm based in the Northeast. That's where we yep. operate. And uh, mm -hmm. and so you know, not only is it that so 08 wiped out the construction class, right? Yes. So yes. a lot yes. of general contractors just never, you know, they went on to do other things, right? They they, they did yeah. different businesses now. And um, so all of that development that should have happened over the 08 to uh, say, call it to 2018 timeframe, that 10 year span just didn't happen. And now and, we're way behind. And now we are what uh, I see numbers of anywhere from 3.8 to 4.2 million housing units behind yeah. uh, over the U.S., um, you know, across the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a legitimate problem. And the fact is, is that I, I would bet a lion's share uh, majority of those four point whatever million housing units are B-class units and they're not building anywhere other than the Carolinas, which I see everywhere, right? Um, right. You know, pervasively, particularly North Carolina. Uh, I'm just not seeing a ton of B-class building happening. Right. Yeah, they can't afford to in Florida. Right. I mean, they just can't. I mean, building costs right now, you know, on, on the low end, I'm seeing in the high 160 a square foot. And realistically, you're probably looking at, particularly here in Connecticut, you're probably looking at, you know, $195, $200 a square foot to build. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're we're doing the math on, on you know, various land projects that come across our desk. And we're like, I don't, unless we're going to hold it for 25 years, I don't see how this goes <laughs> cash flow positive and, and finance right. it for 40. Um, I don't right. see how these are, you know, viable cash flowing deals uh, unless you're buying the land, unless you're getting the land for free. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's really hard it's to. Not happening in free. Florida. No, it's not happening anywhere. I, no, I keep not. trying to ask landowners to give me their, their uh, properties for free and they just won't do it. Well, they're the funny. People are funny that way. The nerve of those guys. I know the, it's a horrible. <laughs> I'm going to give back horrible. a little, come on. <laughs> So, so let me ask you, you know, I mean, one of the things that I'm always mindful of, and, and you've, you know, you've been doing this for quite some time at a very high level. Um, and, you know, you're obviously a, an accomplished entrepreneur. I'm curious, what do you think, you know, when you meet people along the way, you know, people that would love to get into this business, you know, what separates them, you know, the people that are stopping you on the street or meeting you at a networking event or whatever saying, man, I would love to do what you do. What mm -hmm. separates those folks from you and me and other people, you know, that are actually in this business and doing okay? Yeah, I think, uh, and it's not just our business. Um, I think it it's uh, people in general. What I, and I was probably guilty of this early on in my career. And that is, you kind of, you kind of got to get out of your own way. And most people so don't know how to do that because you right. don't really understand what that means. Right. I, you just don't. I mean, you think, I mean, I was taught to go to school, get a good job, get a good corporate job. You'd be set for life, do it. And uh, whew, Me too. Nothing, I mean, the world changed, you know, nothing against yeah. my parents, but the world changed. And uh, when you make that switch from being an employee to being the person that owns the business, yep. I, it, your thinking couldn't be any more different. I mean, it is completely different. 
And what I think people do is they have trouble imagining themselves, you know, like, like we've raised almost $40 million in the last two years. Wow. Congratulations. It would be hard for me 15 years, 20 years ago to imagine that I would be making that statement. Like I'm that guy. So you just, it, right. it is very hard for people to get their hands around that because they don't know what it means. And sometimes people are just scared. They're just like, I don't know, man, that, you know, because another thing we were taught, I was taught, they fly under the radar. Right. Nobody will notice you. It's all good. That's what right. you want. A nice, right. easy life. Nobody mm -hmm. notices you. And you can't do that and do the things that uh, that we're talking about. So it's it's most of the time it's people. Yep. Um, now, what if you can just get them to take little steps? And what happens is, you know, you look at any successful person, and they will tell you, you see that successful person today, after they've made ten thousand little steps along the right, way, right. they will tell you that journey was not pretty. Right. It, it didn't. There was no certainty that if I just keep doing this, I will definitely be that amazing right. superstar there's and it's just really hard for people to understand if i can just get them to do a little bit a little bit a little bit and and really roll up their sleeves and do the hard work then they'll get there and next thing you know you're you're looking in the mirror you're like wait a minute i'm that successful person damn yeah, look, look how what far i've come right yeah exactly look at what I mean, just it's... happened to me that's the amazing part I, I couldn't agree more it's that incrementalism right it's you know i mean even if you're you're trying to to improve your health right you're yeah. not going to run a marathon day one. You're going right. to run. You're going to run half a mile or a mile, and then you're yeah. going to run 1.1 miles, and then you're going to run 1.3 miles, and over the course of you know I don't know six months, you're going to be running, and you're going to realize, oh my god, I just ran 14 miles. I was going to say I'm up to right. two miles. Now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's me. Right. 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 <laughs> but uh, you know, but the but the other part of it is that's interesting is that the. Um, you know, I, I think that what's the what's the Tony Robbins state? You know, people overestimate what they can do in a year and grossly underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 years. And I think yeah. that that is um, spot on and exactly what you yep. were just saying. Right. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. Well said. Yeah. I didn't so, know that was Tony Robbins. I've heard that a number of times. I didn't know that he was the source of that. That's cool. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he was. But, uh, I, I've Not read 9000 of his books, so it's in there somewhere. I, I couldn't. Take it. It. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it, and, and the thing is, is that it's a bias towards action, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's just doing that one thing today. That's going to move you just one more step down the, down the, down the yep. path. And, yep. uh, pretty soon you're all the way down that path and you're Ken, Ken Gee and you own or manage, you know, thousands of units. And yeah. you, you well, I, I have a long ways to go. I'm still on that journey. Just yeah, like exactly you. right on. We are always, there's all, you can always find somebody bigger, better, stronger, more successful. Without a doubt. There always is, right? Yep. Um, so, so in terms of, you know, the, the capital raise and, and what you've done over the last, you know, two years, two short years, um, you know, what, what caused you to change or evolve your business to go from, I mean, it sounds like a lot of what you were doing was, was inter internally financed, or maybe it was like a close uh, friends and family type of of JV type rounds, um, but what made you decide? Okay, I'm going to launch a fund and I'm going to raise money, you know, in in that in that way, which is you know, it's a very different conversation with a with an investor, right? Yeah, it, no, it sure is. So it was probably more than a couple of years ago we started syndicating. Yep, and it wasn't until. Um, um, well, I don't know. We we just decided that we needed to to grow. I, I just decided in my mind it was time for me to grow. There were a lot of people that were bigger, better, smarter, more successful than me. And, you know, you start to think to yourself, wait, there's no reason I can't do that. Let's just yep. go do it. Right on. What are they doing? Uh, I, you hear model, mimic, and I can't remember the rest of it, right? But go do what they're doing. You take a little bit from a lot of very successful people is what I try to do. Yep. And because you can't, you don't want to become somebody else. Don't do that. Right. That that is cheesy. We see that, uh, you know, they see that all day long. Right. Pick little bits and pieces from a bunch of people, internalize it, figure out how it is that you're going to be, you know, you're going to incorporate that into your life and then do it. And that's what I did is I just said, you know what? We went, uh, we went full on without, you know, external marketing. I mean, we, well, we invest in heavily and, yeah. online marketing and just having this conversation with you and getting getting the word out you know three years ago there's zero chance you would get me on a zoom 
a call or a podcast. I would have right. laughed at you. Like, stop it. You're being ridiculous. Uh, but uh, yeah, wrong answer, right? Right. Well, I mean, the, and I, I think I blame COVID for a lot of that, right? You know, because yes. I think the world fundamentally changed, you know, when we no all- No doubt about it. No right. doubt about it, Ed. No doubt about it. It changed I mean, me. I have virtual cups of coffee with people all over the world on a daily basis that I would normally have, you know, up the street at a Dunkin' Donuts or a, or a Starbucks or, you know, Pete's coffee or whatever. So I'm not offending anyone out there. Who's right, 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 right. right. Uh, you know, but the fact is, is that, um, you know, those, those coffee meetings are now a lot of them are, heck, most of them are virtual. Right. And what, what did, what did I, I'll tell you what I learned from those. A lot of people love them. Because you can just accomplish so much more. Absolutely. Because when you meet someone, say on LinkedIn, and you want to connect and you get together on a Zoom call, you can very quickly decide, hey, can, can we work together? Can we help one another somehow? And it doesn't turn into uh, three hours and, you know, travel and everything else. It's, you know, right. 20 minute on and off and next yeah. person. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have told me they love it because they can just get it. so much more done in a day. I, yeah, I mean, I can talk, I can meet. Uh, whether it's a potential partner, uh, yeah. you know, a contractor, a property manager, a, you know, a, a potential investor, whatever, you know, you can have eight, 10, 12 meetings a day. And, and I can look up. you in the eye and I can see your facial expressions yeah. and I still get all those benefits. Yeah, no, right. it's, right. It, I, I love the fact that we can do this. And and I still I like get getting together in person. Yeah, right on, but then I won't get my COVID all over you and everybody's yeah, right, 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 right. Yes, exactly. So, um, so, you know, I'm curious, you know, you had mentioned, I, I think it might've been before we started recording that, uh, you know, you have had the benefit of a lot of people helping you. And that's one of the reasons why you're so yeah. generous with your time. And I uh, thank you again for that. Um, so I'm curious, you know, of the people that have given you advice over the years, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? And I'm, I'm actually curious who gave it to you. Yeah, boy, uh, I get advice from so many people. Um, pro I would say in the, within the last several years, probably the person that gave me the best advice, um, guy you probably heard of, uh, Grant Cardone. He, yep. he said, "Guys, you got to think bigger. Yeah. You are thinking way too small." And uh, I, you know, it it takes a while for things to sink in with me, and. Uh, and so that that has proven to be that that might have been what has changed. You know, we've we've raised we've grown more in the last two or three years than we grew in the last several, you know, prior to that. And so uh, but we still are doing it in a controlled fashion. I'm always careful because sure. I don't want to be that guy that grows too fast and doesn't have the foundation under him. So we spend a lot of time and energy making sure the foundation's secure. But that that's probably the best advice. Um other than that, there's, I get so much advice from so many. I mean, I just try to get little pieces here and there. Yeah. Just like people, you know, hopefully listening to this podcast, maybe I hope to say one thing that, that sticks with somebody and That's it maybe cool. helps them. If that happens, that, that I'm super Mission accomplished. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm, you know, I know, you know, in a lot of cases and, and I suspect in your case, you know, leaders, it, it, I, 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 fundamentally believe leaders are readers, right? And, yeah. you know, but, but these days, you know, the way technology works, you're not necessarily reading, right? I mean, I, I consume, you know, I read, a, I try to read a book a week, but I'm, I'm listening to it. I'm not, I'm not reading it. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I'm curious, you know, whether it's podcasts or online videos or seminars or, you know, reading or listening or whatever, you know, what are, how do you, as a, as, a, as the, you know, the, the leader of your company, how do you consume information to, to apply to your day, to your daily job? And, you know, the other question I'm I'm curious about is, you know, who are you paying attention to these days? Yeah. So to answer your question and how do I get this information? I get it from all of the above. Okay. I would say it's less actual reading. Um, it is a lot of video. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, um, I love, podcasts. I love these online webinars. Um, I just participated in one over the weekend that was fairly low key, but man, the speakers were incredible. Yeah. And, you know, I tuned in the day before I was supposed to speak because I just, you know, I just want to get a feel for how is it flowing yeah, wanna... and things like that. Right, right, right. Four hours later, I'm still on this. I'm still on it. You know, that I'm thinking, wait a minute. Right. I just checked and, and it's just such, there's just so many people that uh, now have the ability to share 
what's helped them be successful. Right. And for me to think for a minute that every one of those people that d- d- they don't have something to contribute to me to make me better would be just arrogant, right? I mean, I, that's what I think. And so I just want to, I just try to consume as much as if I can. It's probably too much because what, ha- I mean, you're just, it's just so much. I mean, it's yeah. coming at you nonstop. So <clears throat> that that's uh, how I how I get that. I I love these online webinars though. Yeah, me too. So so how do you guard against being um, informationally overloaded? Uh, yeah, I I like to make notes. I like to I use Trello a lot, so I try to make notes in Trello. And then I what usually happens is when I'm on a plane, I go back and I start to digest. And I and as I'm learning and thinking about this, I'm trying to say, okay, how could I apply this to my business? But right. what you have to do is you really have to do it in a controlled fashion in a in a manner that makes sense otherwise you know you're just kind of jabbing at your business right. and you can't do that no. right you got to internalize this see how it all fits together okay yes and this makes sense and then you can go incorporate that into your business right. uh, i would say though that i what what i focus on now at this point because i've kind of learned that your business can only go as far as you personally are able to develop Right. If you think about that, whoever's at the top, I mean, it, it, there's there you're at the top. I mean, yeah. if if you don't grow, if I don't grow, if I don't improve and focus on self development, all the pe- the good people underneath me, well, if they're not able to grow, they're good. They'll leave. Right. They'll go somewhere else. So that right. pushes me to get even better. Right. So right. On. I spend most of my time and energy on is yeah. trying to become a better leader, a better person, a better. Uh, a, a better person at making them successful. That's right, the right. big change in your life as you go up in an organization. You know, I, I yeah, we do what we do, but your your time is more spent trying to make the people around you successful. Yes. And if you do that, good Lord. I mean, look what you just did, right? Right. I mean, that's, in, first of all, it's an incredible feeling to to be a little bit responsible for somebody else's success. Sure. It's even yeah. more uh, cool when you realize, man, I, the business that I run is getting all the rewards for this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, that, and, and that's, like you said, it's, it's so gratifying to see somebody, you know, reach their perceived potential and then realize, yeah. wow, that person actually has way more to give, right? All right. So let's start working on that. They surprise and themselves all the time, man. It's every day. awesome when I see that. I know it's so. And much then fun. we keep reflecting on it. I say, "Do you mad? Do you remember a year ago? You thought they just shake their head. They're like, yeah, I can't believe what I'm doing.' Right. And then you know you're doing something right. Yeah, that's how you know you got it right. Absolutely. Yep. yep. And um, so you know, and and you know, with that, uh, you know, obviously that helps you serve your residents more effectively. It helps you serve your in- investors more effectively. It helps you know, it, it makes you feel good, right? You put your head down on the pillow at night, knowing you're doing a good, you're doing a good job, right? Yep. yep. Um, you know, it grows your company. It provides opportunities for people to grow. You know, I mean, my goal when I hire somebody is I'm going to teach you how to invest in real estate as part of your job. You're going to have to learn everything we do. And the reason being is that, you know, first off, we're a small company, right? So, you know, we're only 10 people. And so I want everybody to be able to do everybody else's job just in case somebody gets the flu, right? Yeah. Or goes on vacation. Um, But the other part of it is, is that I I really want them to one day come to me and say, you know what, I just bought my first apartment building and I'm, I'm leaving. I'm sorry to say I'm leaving, but I'm going to start my own company and that'll be a happy day for me. Right. That'll be all right. Mission accomplished. Yep. Yep. Who on the team is replacing you? And we got to figure that out, but you know, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. Exactly. Right. (laughs) And uh, those are good days. Um, so, so Ken, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, where you are in your journey, um, you know, is retirement a possibility or are you just having too much fun? No, I'm not retiring anytime soon. This yeah, no, I, I didn't mean soon. I mean, ever. Well, I don't, I don't know because I enjoy what I'm doing. I mean, I like to have my own uh, time. I don't want to be the one in the weeds all the time, right. uh, but um, it, I don't, I, I don't know. What am I going to do when I retire? I, I don't right. I don't know. Yeah, somebody asked I, me I that. Even, quite honestly, I, I have given it zero thought. Yeah, somebody asked me that. My uncle asked me that a while back. And I'm like, what do you mean? Why? Why would I? I'm having way too much fun. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm that making... made me realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. How old am I? Do I need to be thinking about retirement? Is that I'm a... only 105 years old, so I got plenty of time. Yeah. So, you know, there it's, you uh, no, I thought about it. And I was like, you know, 
I, I'm literally making money, li- making a living doing my hobby. Yeah. So yeah. what am I going to do? You know, I'm, I lack the talent and skill to go play golf at the, you know, at the, in the senior, uh, on the senior level. You know, yeah. Yeah. Me tour. too. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I guess, you know, this is, this is my superpower. So why not? Right. Yep. Yep. Um, so, so Ken, I've, I've really enjoyed our conversation today and I, I thank you for your time um, and your wisdom and, and all those gold nuggets you've been dropping along the way. If, if someone wants to learn, you know, more about you or get to get a hold of you or, learn sure. more about KRI partners or, um, you know, the funds that you're building. Um, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So go to KRI partners.com slash invest. Excellent. And, uh, that'll lead you to a page where you can see, you, know, you can see our fund webinar. You can, you know, see our entire track record that's been vetted by Verivest. Yep. You yep. can see how we do what we do. And, uh, and then, of course, set up an appointment to talk with me about, uh, if, you know, if it's something you're interested in. Sure. KRIpartners.com slash invest. That's the best Excellent. way. Thank you, Ken. Hey, Ken, I have one more really important, vital question to ask you. And that is, okay. are you a Bearcat or a Buckeye? Buckeye. There you go. All right. Yeah. Ken Gee, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. It's really a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. All right. This has been the Real Estate Underground Podcast, a Clark Street Capital presentation. Thanks for joining us. If you're enjoying the show, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends. If you'd like to learn more about Clark Street Capital and our upcoming projects, please join our investor club at clarkst.com slash join. Until next time, happy investing.